What's going on guys? How are you doing today? It's Inger Roleplayer once again. Today I want to present you pretty much the finalized version of the Spectral Shield Throw build for the Dead Eye. Uh, it was a project that I wanted to run in the best league and uh, even though I decided to quit the league already, I just do not enjoy it. I want to finalize the build for you guys so we have like the full understanding how the, sh the shield works, how well it works, what are the problems, what are the cons and the pros. And the original idea behind the build was uh, to try to play the new skill <clears throat> and it did look like a lot of... Uh, it did uh, look a lot like, you know, Blast Shield Crusader from Diablo 3 and it's really cool that uh, Redding Games decided to implement this shit. And I was pretty hyped and uh, the numbers look really promising. Originally I always do some kind of a sketch project and part of the building and see a look at the numbers. And the num uh, the original numbers didn't really look that promising but then I tried to min maxing shit, squeezing here and there and eventually I settled up on around a million and a half damage for very very like cheap gear. Only the rings are like exalt, exalt and a half. And the rest are kind of complete shit, so it looks very promising and I decided to give the build a go and I was not that frustrated. It was very solid build, it carried me onto the red maps, this is where I mostly decided to quit the best tree, but it worked up to this way. I had no dramatic problems during leveling unlike most people say. So it's a very solid build and I will really show, show you guys how it works and it'll tell, tell you everything about the build. For the pros of the build I would say that I was pretty surprised at the clear speed of the build. It moves really fast, it gets quite a bit of attack speed eventually and uh, uh, when you get this third chain on of the ascendancy, this is when things become like really fast and uh, not, uh, you know, as slow as I thought and uh, not as slow as most people pretend it to be. With three chains, the clear speed is pretty damn good. We are using rolling blades as well, so it's very fast across the map and uh, pretty effectively. So. I, I was really impressed with the clear speed and it didn't really slow down, it just became faster and faster as you gain this attack speed here and there, it's okay. So it was pretty satisfactory while leveling and mapping. Another thing that uh, really kind of surprised me is how tough the build is. There's quite a decent amount of block chance uh, that we get and we're using the shield so it gives us an additional block chance and uh, we get quite a bit of armor and evasion and most specifically evasion and with the ta new Tailwind uh, uh, you know, Ascendancy node on uh, the Dead Eye, it becomes really really tough. The, the chance to evade attacks like I have around like 40-50% to 50 which is quite a lot and uh, overall uh, the build felt really really smooth for mapping and I didn't really die that much to be honest it was not very frustrating and the high evasion and high block chance really paid off and it felt really really solid for the cons of the build i would say that the single target damage is still very problematical not because it's slow it's fine and the numbers looked uh okay in power building and overall uh, the clear speed like I said is fine but single target is still problematical mostly because you know uh, the the shield itself is pretty slow and attack speed is not close to what frost blades is for example and it can feel pretty slow and unfortunately when your shield like throws uh, you throw the shield and you miss you basically miss your mana and you miss the target and this is very problematic against fast moving bosses and some bosses that can inflict a, a high amount of damage and are very mobile like you know, the asteroid boss and some other bosses they can be a total pain in the ass and I really hope that something will like improve in this aspect of the spectral shield throw skill in general
Now let's take a look, look at paddle building guys and I'm explaining you the skill tree. And the first thing that I want to say is <clears throat> there are multiple ways how we can play Spectral Shoe Throw right now. You can play it in different classes, you can go Ranger Dead Eye, you can go Raider, you can go uh, Pathfinder. Uh, and um, here we can actually go with the Duelist as well and go like Bleed Explosion. Uh, shields as well you can go assassin here right and go spec into crit and overall uh, like there are two major ways uh, which are different in scaling which is the crit and the non-crit uh, versions of the build with assassin you will uh, spec more into crit with everything else you spec less into crit and the spectral throw is a projectile attack it's not melee, it's not a spell, so there is not a much uh, no, crit multiplying crit chance uh, like the global crit on the tree. And unfortunately, specking heavily into crit is a very problematical. Possibly the best deal with a crit will be the Cyan Ascendant going into maybe Assassin and I don't know, maybe Dead Eye or something else. Maybe Dead Eye Inquisitor, it's really hard to tell, but something of this will be like the crit. But I decided to go with non-crit version um, because I uh, saw the numbers were really good even for the non-crit, so I decided to go this. And I even made two different versions of the build. One is the physical version, which is mostly physical and goes on the right side of the, side of the tree, scaling projectile damage and physical damage. And another version is 90% conversion to cold damage. And it does look a lot like frost blades, actually. Very, very similar. And what you see here is a 90% from fist to cold conversion here. As you can see, we'll start here with projectile damage, grabbing attack speed and ballistic mastery. Then we'll start stacking more here with uh, the life, going with the finest, then the heart of the oak. Then we transition to the Herbalism here, taking Winter Spirit and Fresh Freeze. Then, as the first priority, I would personally try to get to the Vitality Void, because uh, it basically will leech you uh, life as attack damage. And also this point uh, will leech you mana as attack damage and will basically save you mana. Because, you know, this is pretty intense casting build and you will be out of mana very early on. So, <clears throat> as a first priority, just try to get these points here as fast as possible. After that, you can actually start scaling more life and going to Primeval Force. Then start transitioning into more life here, more life here. Grab Fury Bolts, try to get Defiance life here then start uh, going to the path of the warrior i will also try uh, around level 70 try to reach this uh, elemental overload as you will also gain access to many intelligence nodes here which will be very useful for most of your skills like the elemental focus for example elemental focus can be problematical to level up without the low intelligence after you get elemental overload, just spec into more life, 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 and that's about it. So this is uh, the physical to elemental conversion, and we use Hrim Sorrows as the conversion, and the another 40% uh, we convert for the Winter Spirit and Flash, uh, Winter Spirit and Weapon Cold Damage. This is like another 40% conversion. For the Ascendancy, the first I would get uh, is Far Shot because, you know, it will be, uh, it will increase your damage pretty much very really early on. On the Cruel Lap, I will get Gathering Winds because it will give you a tremendous amount of evasion and will boost you a lot. Especially if you roll, uh, you know, evasion on your flasks, this will really help lap here. For the Merciless Lap, I would go with Ricochet because this is where you will be... Uh, like filling all your chains uh, This will be really good for the muscles lap and for the ubi lap when you get there I will take fast and deadly as the last resort because this will double your accuracy as well as uh, Give you more attack speed and projectile damage as well 
So this is like the first uh, fist to elemental conversion build, guys. For the skills you can see everything here. This is elemental damage with attack, solid focus, projectile damage, uh, physical projectile attack damage, call to fire, maim and spectral throw. For the fire link just drop maim. I also have a very kind of solid written guide on the Path of Exile forums as well, so you can see this as well. This is basically 45 with Whirling Blades. This is Blood Rage as increases our attack speed. Uh, this is Falling with Val Lightning Trap and Caster Protected to increase our attack speed. Lightning Golem here as well. And Power is not really that important. We can drop this and it's almost have no impact on whatsoever. This is a little trick that I used to get my Elemental Overload. Original idea for Elemental Overload is you need to perform the crit chance, uh, the crit attack. But the problem is the crit chance is so incredibly low that we didn't really crit at all. And uh, I, I remember this trick with uh, from the age when I used uh, Ice Spear with GMP to get Power Chargers for my Flame Totem build. Uh, basically, Ice Spear uh, generates crit attacks for you. When you when the enemies uh, when the enemies hit you, the ice spear shoots and it's perform a crit and you get the, your elemental overload on top. This is the deal, guys. Frost bump is also a massive cold debuff that basically drops the resistance of the enemies as well. Now here is our castles with we run blasphemy with projectile weakness. This is one of the biggest damage multipliers as you can see. This is just absolutely massive. Another one is Hatred as well, very massive. Enlighten just to ease your casting because you will not have much unreserved mana to cast Spectre Sulfro. So Enlighten, just try to get it because otherwise you will drop your mana quite much. This is pretty much this, guys. For the items, um, uh, Ever's Mirage is one of the best because it gives you high elemental damage with attacks as well as massive attack speed as well as additional chain and this is one of the free chains that we have on our build. Lyran's Remorse is the, uh, the chip end game uh, shield that can actually carry you all the way through the red maps. This is very very powerful and potentially like uh, the uh, the end super end game shield will be the crafted colossal tower shield with over 2500 something armor. This will actually very greatly improve your DPS even though they will drop life a bit but your DPS will be massive, massive absolutely. You will get over 2 million DPS with the crafted essence of dread uh, colossal tower shield. Now for the helm, Mr. Konya's head is pretty cheap, you know, enchant to get Spectral Shield Throw damage in it. Originally I had Abscurantis here and it's still very good, but unfortunately getting Abscurantis with the Spectral Shield Throw enchant is literally impossible because no one gives a shit. So Sir Konya's head is your best deal here. Cream Soros for the Fist conversion. Uh, basically, bots with increased attack speed and resist. Gloom Fang is uh, another interesting item. And uh, not only it leeches Chaos damage as life, but it also gives you an additional chain. And this is our third chain as well. And not only this, but projectiles gain 20% of non Chaos damage as extra Chaos damage per chain. And imagine that. We have three chains, so this is like 60% of non-chaos damage as extra chaos damage. This is a lot of damage, guys. A lot of damage. As you can see, this is holy shit how much damage in the build. And this is like the build defining item here. Steel rings are mostly just elemental damage with attacks, life and nothing else. Flat fist, it's okay. Uh, just a belt with elemental damage with attacks again, nothing crazy. The eyes are mostly flat fizz, uh, damage to attacks and life. For the flasks, taste of heat and serious promise. Uh, uh, the ons, uh, the increased damage, the sulfur flask, and uh, the last one is basically onslaught, nothing crazy. Wise oak is also cool, but not that mandatory. For the jewels, uh, you will need basically global fizz damage as well as projectile damage or just increased damage 
and increase maximum life that's about it nothing crazy about this at all so this is guy these guys are the fist to elemental conversion build and i also will link this build which is fizz uh fizz fizz pure fizz uh build it also does over a million damage and it goes mostly on the right side of the tree i think it's actually more straightforward and easier to scale it's pretty much the same shit except it mostly utilizes the global physical damage and more life here on the right side of the side of the tree without going to the fat life will there is no elemental overload as well and it's easier to scale i think this is also a very solid very solid build guys dice does quite a bit of damage and overall it's up to you to decide what you're gonna play but I think that both versions are really really strong this is the same items almost entirely even uh, the belly of the beast here it also uses the winds of change glass because we didn't really need conversion so winds of change are very powerful everything else is pretty much the same except we also use uh, the mm, dagger with double fist to LA with double fist is extra LA so this is good Overall, this is like uh, an alternative way to build your uh, Spectral Shield Throw build here. For early leveling, I strongly recommend playing with Frost Blades because this is literally very close to the actual Spectral Shield Throw and uh, play with frost blades up till level 12 because at level 12 you will be actually gaining the spectral shield throw and this is when you will be starting uh, using the actual skill and for the early weapons one of the best if not the absolute best uh, which can actually carry you to the end game would be the princess saber because it gives you attack speed increased fizz damage adds fizz damage as well as gains uh, a part of your physical damage as extra cold damage which is very very strong in fact if you put this in part of building this is almost as good as the Everest Mirage there even in the end game for the shields I started using this at level 16 this is basically the high evasion shield which I found then it's mostly just upgrading shields this is level 24 this is level 30 uh, then level 42 with this and this all the way up to the other shields like Titicus spam is can also be very very powerful I think at around level 40 or something just start buying unique shields with high armor and or armor and evasion at level 60 I bought the Chernobyl spill which gives me over a thousand of armor which is very powerful this shield like this can also be used and at level 70 this is pretty much the Linus remorse which will carry you all the way into the red maps without any problems with this for the skill gems i would say that just basically any additive damage will be fine depending on how many sockets you have i also have the four link uh recommendations on my path of exile forum thread as well so that's about it guys Now for the end game skills and gear guys I will already uh, I already showed you in the puzzle building but I will tell you once again. So the link should be spectral shield throw with main support, elemental damage with attack support, projectile, physical projectile attack damage support, cold to fire support because we gain tremendous amount of cold we convert almost all physical to cold conversion so we can get an extra of it called as fire damage as well <clears throat> and elemental focus this is basically the six link here as for the end game shields let's take a look at this because um as you can see here for example this will basically boost your damage even more i don't think all uh, over 2000 uh, armor is much better than the lane as remorse and this is uh, the shield that I found on the best row right now. Just 
clicking uh, like almost instantly it's available there it's 15 exalts that's expensive but not as expensive as in standard so if we go and put this shield uh, in uh, the power building you can instantly see it as how much damage increases is almost 2 million now which is a lot this is like 25 percent more damage with this shield of course our life will drop but not dramatically we're still over 6 0.5 life though this is a lot as you can see uh, any go going from Linus remorse to a very good crafted essence of red colossal tower shield will be very huge dps increase the best that you can have yes 20 26 percent the power building shows me that's about it guys For the flasks, like I said, uh, these are really the optimal flask right here. Taste of Hate is the biggest uh, fizz to LA boost you can get. Serious Promise is also very, very powerful, like the number one, as you can see, uh, how much how much it drops, like Taste of Hate first, then at Serious Promise. Flooring Flooring Chalice is not important, just any sulfur flask will do the job here. Uh, and the fourth will be uh, the Onslaught Flask, definitely for <clears throat> the attack speed, which is mandatory. The fifth is basically the Life, 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 Life Flask, that's about it. Another thing that a lot of people ask me is the Wise Oak, but you know, I'm not a very big fan of the Wise Oak because it does look very good, but uh, only on paper, although it does quite a bit of elemental resist, which is very good uh, early in the game I think so uh, I'm not a fan of Wise Oak but you can try to use it for more penetration if you wish for the Panthing Gods uh, for the Major I always use of these two which is Soul of Lunaris for mapping and Soul of Solaris for the single target you know encounters like the bosses and shit for the minor gods i'm a huge fan of solar for slather because it basically gives me fla life flask and i can just you know run around a bit the bosses and shit and the, all the tough shit and for the lab it's absolutely priceless as well but the soul of growth cool is not bad at all uh, for additional physical damage reduction when you are really like suffering of uh, this so these are my choices, Lunaris uh, for the mapping and L Solaris for the single target as well as Ruslata for all around mapping and single target and uh, for if you feel like you're a risk wish and you're not running with uh, the Basel flasks I would might potentially drop uh, to Soul of Groot Cool as well. Now, now is this build hardcore viable or not guys? Unfortunately I think that not and mostly because of boss encounters. Some bosses can be really problematical like I said. Across the map it's not that terrible even though you can uh, you know, potentially hit reflect here and there and jump into shit and die. I would say that mapping was not that problematical and didn't really die in maps at all. High evasion and I rolled evasion here on the flasks as well. Uh, this basically gives me a lot of evasion. Like look here for example, this is my evasion rating. Uh, when I perform this skill I gain Tailwind and my evasion rating like 25% and we'll get this and get almost 5000. That's a lot. <clears throat> That's a lot of evasion guys. And this is basically during mapping, um, we are pretty safe. The only unsafe place is the boss encounters and some bosses were super nasty to kill and takes forever, especially with the bosses that relocate and just sit in one place for the fucking minute. Like, you know, the residence map boss and the, the estuary boss and, and the lava chamber was pretty problematical because the bitch just sat in lava and regenerated. <clears throat> so it was pretty problematical and bosses can hit very hard and kid you for the life threshold. 
even though we have quite a bit of life so i do not recommend this build on hardcore even though it is possible it is possible guys Now let's talk about the overall build effectiveness guys and how <clears throat> the build overall like uh, performs across the maps, across the end game and such. For the clear speed I would potentially give it 3 out of 5 because you know I didn't really have any problems progressing whatsoever. The clear speed was satisfactory, it was not bad, it was very good actually and uh, it did play a lot like frost blades uh, when I played in Harbinger. <laughs> I did frost blades and it, it felt pretty close to what frost blades delivers. So for clear speed, three out of five, no big problems at all. For the post power, I would give it maybe one or two out of five. Unfortunately, this is like literally the only weak place of the build, even though it's not that of a huge problem against some bosses. Uh, for the other bosses, like I mentioned before, it can be very problematic up to a point when it can be even a bit of frustrating. Like when the bosses relocate and when your shield is slow to hit them fast enough and uh, when the bosses like do elemental damage, shoot projectiles and shit. It can be very very nasty, so 2 out of 5 is the best I can give for this build and um, for the boss power. For the AoE power, like I said, once again, 3 out of 5 is very solid because the build clears really safely and when you get this free chains, you know, it's not problem clearing whatsoever at all and can clear maps in like 2-3 to three minutes, any, any maps actually, so the AoE power and the, the AoE damage when you get this fur chain, when you get this Gloomfang and Everest Mirage and everything work together, it's absolutely a fine. For the toughness as well, I think I would give us as 3 out of 5, It's the build is not squishy, but the bosses can kick your ass really hard, it's not hardcore friendly at all. So across the maps I didn't really find problems surviving, the bosses were literally the only problem. So 3 out of 5 is simply because the boss encounters are really problematical once again, 3 out of 5 for the toughness guys. And overall I would like to thank you guys for the watching the build, I really hope you enjoyed it, it's very in-depth and even though I quit it best, I will continue playing this uh, build and uh, the standard uh, because this is where I will pl I plan to buy uh, the shields. Uh, so I will still continue updating the build and we'll see how the, the skill gem itself evolves and maybe will be buffed as well and it will be buffed on the tree so we will see you guys thanks for watching and see you soon